Hello, and in this video, we are going to be exploring the question of how do I know when I've taken enough data? Now, in a prior section entitled the normal distribution and standard deviation, we said that we often assume that the standard deviation of our measurements, our sample standard deviation, is the same as the standard deviation of our population. And this is generally only true, however, if we have enough data. How do we know if we've had enough data? How do we know that we've taken enough measurements? Well, it turns out that one way to do this is to look at how your mean changes as you collect more data. And the basic idea is that you take data, calculating the mean as you go, and when the mean stops changing, then you say, okay, I'm pretty good. I have enough data, we're gonna stop. So let's see how this works in the context of this experiment. Well, in order to get started, I need some data points. So I'm gonna reference back to the procedure for this uh, experiment. And we can see here the basic setup. And you can see I've kind of already done it based upon the procedure video. And I've got my glasses and I would set my pen like so and move my object forward until it appeared to be at the same distance as the pen looking through the glasses this way. And we see that the object appears to be further away from the glasses than the pen does. The object distance is greater than the image distance. Then I would slide my glasses back some fixed amount. In my case, I went with two uh, lines on my notebook paper here. Repeat the experiment, move my image distance also back uh, two lines, three lines, sorry, went back three lines, my apologies, um, went back three lines, <clears throat> and repeat the experiment, put my pen down, slide the object forward until we get to uh, about the same distance, mark it, and we're good. So now I have two image distances that are going to be very close to the same value by design and two object distances that might have a little bit more variation in them. And now I can go and begin to set up a table of these different results. So if I go and measure the uh, image distances, maybe start to uh, label my columns because that's always good image object, distance, image, and object, all in centimeters. For my first trial, say I get 5.75 centimeters. And for my first object distance, I get 7.60 centimeters. OK? And that is trial number one. All right, so far, so good. And for my second measurement, I got 5.67 uh, centimeters. For image and for object, I got 7.62 uh, centimeters for my second object distance. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to go through and calculate what's called a running average, where we're determining the average of our data as we go. Now, I would like the average for I to be next to I and the average for O to be next to O, which means I need to add a column in between here. There's two ways to do that. One of them is to click the C at the top to get the full column and then right click and you see that I get a, a little menu. Or the other option is you see there's this little arrow and I can click that and get the same thing and I can insert a column to the left. And I'll label this column the running average for I. Always good to put my units like so. Highlight and if I wait for my cursor to turn to this double-headed arrow and double-click it. It'll make my column nice and wide, OK? And then the same thing over here, running average for O, like so. Make that nice and wide. So that's trial one and trial two. So here's where we are so far. Now, a running average for just one point doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's not very meaningful. I'll just get the number back. So I'm just going to fill this with some dashes. And the way to do that is to use the apostrophe and two dashes. If you just put a dash, uh, spreadsheets kind of get confused on if you mean a minus sign or what you're looking to do. And so the little apostrophe says, no, I'm just putting a dash in here. And you see that I get a little dash. 
we're going to align that right to make it uh, consistent with our conventions for good, nice tables. And there we go. Add it. I'm going to align all this left to make it uh, consistent with our convention. So here we are. And then I can go through and calculate the average of these two data points here. And I get uh, 5.71. Let's crank us up the number of decimal points here because averages often have more decimal points. And similarly over here for the O, so far so good. So now I've got an average of the first two data points. Okay, now we can continue along collecting a third trial uh, with third image distance that's quite similar to the others, uh, maybe 5.68. Again, maybe sliding everything back three lines again on my lined paper might be one way to do this. And I'll get 5.68 and then repeat the experiment to get an object distance of uh, something like 8.6. Okay, so now I've got three different image distances and three different object distances. And this is where we run into a little bit of a complication because if I just copy and paste straight down, that doesn't do what I want. If I click up here, you see it's only giving me the average of trial two and three, but I want a running average of all the trials up to this point. So that's not what I want to do. Okay, so how can we fix this? We use what's called a fixed reference or occasionally called a, a dollar sign because that's the symbol that we're going to use. We'll go through and delete everything here to sort of give us a clean slate to work with. And so let's start by putting just a dollar in front of both the column B and the row we want to start with, B2, and go all the way to B3. Okay, so here we see that it's B2 to B3. And we get the same number we had before because same input, same output. Now let's see what happens when we copy and paste this result over into E3. 6.470, that's not the same as we had before. Let's click up here and see what we're averaging. You can see we're averaging all six of these numbers. We slid over two when we copied and pasted we went to c from c to e and so the range also expanded by two the beginning of the range didn't change because of these dollar signs both the initial row two and the initial column b stayed fixed so now we're averaging all these different numbers and so that's not what we want so the dollar sign says stay put don't slide like you would normally do. So that's not what we want. So let's delete that and see how we might do things a little bit better. We want the row to stay put because we always want to start from trial number one. We always want to start from here, row two. But we want the end row to slide down. So as we go from uh, trial two to trial three, and ultimately all the way down. We want to keep expanding the list of numbers that we're averaging, but we want the column to float so that when I copy my formula from C to, to E, it's now looking at D instead of at B, or looking at the object distances instead of the image distances. So how do we do that? When well, we say keep the row, the starting row at two all the time, but get rid of this lock on the column. So now it's just B dollar two colon B three. All right. So if I copy and paste this over, I get the 7.610 that we had before because we are in fact, lo and behold, looking at the first two trials of object distance. The real neat thing happens when I copy down this way. Now you can see that I'm beginning my average still with trial two, but going all the way down to trial four. I mean, trial three. So I'm doing the, all three trials. This is what we mean by a running average. And if I copy and paste over here, I get a similar sort of behavior, right? Now I have a running average of the first three object distances. Now we want to see, like we said in the beginning, we want to see how the average is changing with time. Uh, as we add data points. So I'm going to add another column in here. 
and we can look at the difference in the average i and i'll and i'll do this as a percent okay like so again make my column wide enough for us to see again first one doesn't make sense frankly the second one also doesn't make sense here because I need at least two averages to calculate a percent difference. But this one will make sense. So I'm going to do 100 times the final minus the initial divided by the initial to get the change. And so you can see that the average, as I added my third trial, the average decreased by 0.18%. This is already a percent because I've multiplied by 100. You can see the 100 here. So the average has decreased by 0.18%. Okay, so let's copy. If, if I click the column and copy, you'll notice it highlights all the way down. I can now go to G and paste. And you'll notice it copies everything from D into G. Uh, not in the width, everything, text, formulas, the whole kit and caboodle. All right, I do want to change it to O because that's what this is. We see that the average object distance, therefore, in increased by 1.1%. So it actually went up a little bit when I added my third trial. So let's do a fourth and see how my averages continue to change. So once again, I slide my glasses back, three lines on my notebook paper, uh, slide my pen back three lines and repeat the experiment. And I get uh, 5.78% 5. Uh, 5 for the image distance. And for the object distance, I get 8.36. So this one's got a little bit uh, more spread to it. Now I can copy and paste everything down. So there are two ways to do this. There's the click trick that you've seen where you wait for this to turn to a plus and then double click and it copy and pastes down. We see that it is now averaging all four of these values, which is what we want. You could, of course, just control or command, depending on if you're an Apple or Mac or a Windows, whatever, uh, control or command C, control or command V, that would also work. So we can see that my average uh, has increased from trial three to trial five, it went up by about a third of a percent, a little more. And now I'm gonna show you a nice trick. You can actually do them together. So you could highlight both of them using shift in the arrow keys or drag uh, while holding. And the plus trick would still work. So wait for this to turn to a plus, double click and boom. So you can see now this is looking at uh, these two values and we see that from trial four, to, from trial three to trial four, my percentage, uh, my average increased by 2%. So we still got some variation in the uh, running object average here. So if we do a fifth and we see what happens, 5.75 for an image distance, for an object distance, 7.60. Now we're hopefully starting to see the benefits of all of these formulas. It makes things easy to just use and reuse. And so there's my impact on image and there's my impact on object. And now we see that both the image and the object have a variation in their average of, of less than 1%. And for me, that's good enough. Now, where you might decide to stop taking data is going to be context dependent. It's going to be dependent on the data you have. That's one of the things with this lab is we're not giving you hard, fast rules. It's not always 1%. Look at your data, think about what you've got, and make a decision based upon your data. There are no right answers. There are no wrong answers. The goal is to be conscious of what you've done and, and why. So maybe your data has a lot more variation in it just by the method you're using, You know the details of how you're making these measurements. So maybe, therefore, your data wiggles around a lot more. So maybe you say, OK, my mean has stopped fluctuating. And the fluctuation in my mean is now less than 10% even. And OK, good enough, I'm going to stop. Or maybe 
you're really good at this and you know you don't think one percent is good enough for you and you want to go down to a tenth of a percent that's fine too once again look at your data think about what you've got and, and make a decision and just be conscious of the decision you've made this concludes this video